This is Monday, January the 4th. Good morning, Jew. Morning, Jew. How are you? I, I'm good. I'm good, good, and I'm concerned that you have a pig. Uh, oh, yeah, it's my way of showing I'm not your typical pig-hating Jew. Really? You're a pig-loving yeah. Jew? I am, actually. Really? Yeah. Um, is, it, is it a new, you know, we have three, like the conservative, reform, and orthodox. We have like also yeah. pig loving as a special yeah. group. PLJ. All right. How do I make it so my box is bigger? Because um, I have to make sure I at a flattering angle. I don't have to worry about you. My box is bigger? You know, on the screen. All right. Uh, I, that was funny. You don't know. You're the, such a techie master. Oh, well. I do know, but I don't think it's that interesting for people to listen to. All right. I didn't think it would take that long, but okay. Look at you in the makeup today. Oh, yeah. You like it? Yeah. I'm feeling underdressed and unprepared oh, now. It's okay. I had to. But you look I, good. I was so tired. I had to make up for it. Uh -huh. I just did actually a gig. I did, um, this is a review to everybody. You know, I'm sure you all had a good Christmas having Chinese food and seeing a movie. I did comedy in a Chinese food store. Uh, food store restaurant in Vermont with another... Oh, you did Mushu comedy? I did Muju and... Uh, Muju, I mean. One of the other comics also brought a plush piggy stuffed pig, in which he did a rap about. He's a, he, does, oh. he does kind of funny raps. His name's MC, Mr. Napkins. It's actually... Oh, okay. It's pretty funny, and it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, He has this cool. stuffed pig that has little... Like, you open the the uterus, the faux stomach of the pig, and you pull out these mini pigs, and then they oh. stick onto these mini, like, um... Udders? Uh, nipples? Whatever? Yes, nipples, but they're done as, like, you know, the way you stick a shirt together, two little things. Snaps. Yeah, so he has this ridiculously hilarious, um, rap about his hippie mom giving him plush piggy and what you do yeah. with plush pig. I mean... That's actually, I don't eat red meat, I don't eat pork, because I really, when I was a little kid, I really liked pigs, so I stopped eating pork, and my good friend really liked cows, so we respected each other's likes and stopped eating each other's animals. And you didn't need to read it in a religious text? No. In fact, I hate when people think I'm kosher. I'm like, I don't eat pork, but I'm not kosher. It's funny, I started my talk show, I started by doing these salons at my home, which were basically Friday night Shabbat dinner, and I stopped letting people talk about work at them, and not because also had nothing to do with reading a religious rule, it was just because everyone was working so much of the time, especially during the dot-com era, that it was like, right. I wanted two hours of not talking about work. You can, right. Yeah, sometimes there are logical reasons, or it's easier right. to come to it this Very way. Very rarely there's actual logic behind Every now and then, it's nice to get logic behind some religious rule. Or you can so throw was, your let's hit the de let's hit let's hit the stories of the day. Oh, well, happy yeah, yeah. new year, happy new year, happy new year, year. happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah. You know, I was asked to do Muju comedy as well. Yes. And what's yeah, and what's really funny is I had to tell the guy. I was like, I can't. It's during Christmas. I'm celebrating Christmas <laughs> with my family. Like it was a big. It's a big deal to miss Christmas. Um, so, it's a big anyway. It's Christmas for some Jews. Yeah, well, they're yeah. Christians. I mean, the funniest story about ours was they sent out these, he sent, he sent out these forms to everybody to fill out when they got there. What do you like most about being Jewish? And I went through them before I went up to host one night and somebody had written, JC, our Lord and Savior was Jewish. Oh, Jew, Jew for Jesus. No, just Christians. Oh, Okay. Serious hardcore Christians because you know you're like, hey, who here's at one point I'm like, is somebody not Jewish? About fourteen hands go up in the room. Well Christmas. I, it's Christmas. I'm doing this show on Christmas. I'm like, why are you here? These people start hitting me with the Jesus. I'm like, how am I gonna do all my Jesus jokes with these people? Well, you know what's I I posted this thing last year <laughs> where I said that um, instead of sending your Jewish friends Hanukkah cards, you should send them thank you notes for giving birth to Jesus. That's what they were doing. Um, they came to a Jewish comedy show to thank us for Jesus. Yeah. So speaking of Jesus, should, I like. how do you like this segue? Should we go over today's headlines? Yeah, let's hit the headlines. You got a Jesus headline? No, I just like to transition with him. Let's transition. Okay, so for well, one story that you know that um, Newark Airport got yeah. shut down yesterday, last night. Yeah. You know what's funny? It's because a guy walked into the the place where you exit, right? I think that's what happened. The guy walked oh. into the place. And I just went on, as you did, we both went on cruises to perform comedy. 
I, Which ends up my, being a very Jewy. Oh God, look at my hair. I'm like so oh, self-conscious so looking at how good you look. Yeah, well, you sit oh. and eat for a week. It's amazing. Oh, I know. So Jewy. Um, so my friend Justin and I, when we were claiming my luggage, he's like, right? "Why don't more people uh, steal luggage?" And I was like, "Cause you can't get in." He's like, "Yeah, you can. You can get into this area. You can walk right in." I think it was weird. A weird premonition. We also. Oh my God. Is Justin preparing it, to shut down an airport? No, but you know what Justin and I did? I feel really guilty about this. The day that we got on the plane going to Fort Lauderdale to embark on the cruise, um, I said to him, for some reason, he said something that provoked me to say, rolling with the homies. And he was like, where's that from again? And I was like, you don't remember? Clueless. And then it was only a couple days later that Brittany Murphy passed. Oh, so you're concerned that you and Justin, when you talk, Things happen. Haunt, yeah. You're haunt, you have like ghosty abilities. Yeah, something like that. All right. So that's and, an interesting idea. Also, you know, it's all, you create everything, another Jewy, narcissistic thing. Right. Whatever happens to be. Kabbalah-esque. It's like New Age and Kabbalah-ish. Right. So, so the airport shutting down, it was fine. It was no big deal. The guy, did they find out why? I don't even, I didn't, th didn't they not find him or something? What I was don't know deal? yet, but I did see pictures when they were trying to get everybody out of there and it was insane. It was incredibly crowded and it was trending on, on Twitter, which was hard for me to believe and it made me think if they're going to start increasing security to crazy levels like this all the time, we're going to see nothing but people tweeting each other constantly. It's going to overtake the right. internet if... Because it'll be the fastest way to get information. It's not like the traditional media is going to cover a lot of details right. about when you can get home and when you can't. If this starts becoming a regular thing of yeah, life. it's going to be you, really boring. Do you think in Israel when they have security checks, if you're stuck somewhere, that people are busy texting each other going, don't go this way, go that way, on the highway? Or no, I think that's probably the norm, so they don't even need to text about it. Right. That's probably true. So, my Newark, Newark, Jews in New Jersey, what do you think? Good or bad for the Jews? Good for the Jews? Uh, brings business. Does it bring business? Does that technically bring business to the, to? It could bring a more Israel-like security approach to the airport. Yeah. What do we think of? You know what happened to me? I've experienced Israel-like uh, security. Do you know that when I went there, you know how they question you before you get on the plane? They ask you. I thought this was they a joke, ask but you they is really your boyfriend ask Jewish. That's what they want to know. Well, is that true? Because I showed up with a black boyfriend at the time. Perfect. No joke. Who did not look Could Ethiopian? He didn't look like. Well, he didn't. Right, but he didn't look like an Ethiopian. Um, and he. Bluish. Uh, every every bluish person Jew, is you're Ethiopian. You're right. You're right. You're right. But Israelis, you know, they're like I, whatever. So they questioned me. They asked me where I was bought mitzvahed, what my Hebrew name was, oh, and what geez. I ate on on holidays and what holidays I, I celebrated. And I said it's I don't like know my Jew Hebrew test. name. It's like Germany. It, but oh, in it Israel. totally was. Are you kidding? I don't know my Hebrew. No, it was, this was at, this happened at the at the airport. I don't know my Hebrew name. I wasn't bat mitzvah. I celebrate Passover, and you eat like a lamb shank and bitter herbs or something. And they pulled me aside. It was me and all the other secular Jews and the half breeds who were going on this program, which was a free trip to Israel. Because of course it would have been a shanda to pass up an opportunity to go to Israel for free. Um, <laughs> well, that but, makes you Jewish right there. That's all you need in my book. Do you know, though, do you know what, um, did I ever tell you this story about when I went to this religious school, which didn't make sense because my parents are big atheists? No, but we're trying to, wait, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. The program was trying to check to see if you were Jewy enough or Israel security. No, Elal security. Gives you a Jew test. I'm not kidding, to yeah. every person who goes? Because I think makes, so. Because if you're Jewy enough, somehow that's fine? Yeah. Like if, you, if I went, if I know the word, code word kreplach, that gets me through. I guess. You're telling me any person? What kind of security system I don't is it? know. You how, have to, you have to find out. But that was to find out what we this eat for program. I know. That's the thing. It's so dumb. If you're a terror, if you're like a, a terrorist, you're going to know, you're going to have your Hebrew name ready and all that. But I actually, I, I, when I went to this religious school, we had to say our, our Hebrew names and I didn't know mine and everyone was like, Lior or whatever. I think I've told you this before. And it got to my turn and I had no idea what my Hebrew name was and I just said, uh, this name went off in my head that my uncle called me and Kachkala, which is Yiddish for little duck, which was very cute, but not a Hebrew name. Um, but I didn't tell them that was my Hebrew name. Good thing. So That's yeah, adorable. Newark is it cute though. So what do we think about I the think Newark splits? It could be good for the Jews in the sense that maybe um, if it gets overloaded enough, some of the Jews in New Jersey will chill out and realize they can't like make everything happen in a hurry. And maybe 
you know, people be a little more understanding about the whole Israeli deal. I don't know. That's, uh, that's and, me yeah. reaching to find a good for the Jews, because generally that kind that's of crowdedness funny. is just bad for all people. Yes. Uh, Except Cory, I, it gives Cory Booker more opportunities to try to deal with the problem, and I'm a fan, so I consider him good for the Jews. I'd make him an honorary Jew. I like him a lot, too. Did you see his Hanukkah, like, videos he did? No, we have to. his weekly YouTubes, and he went during Hanukkah after the Horn Hatch song, and, like, just asked people to do a song for a Hanukkah song, like, improvise one or sing one. It was great. Even though most of them didn't know what it was, they're like, I'm game, happy, whatever. They started, it was great. Huh. So that's that's that story. Um, so here's like the Jewish story happened just before the new. And year. what about the screenings? Should we talk about that? You're a, a lost former jurist. Oh no! What do you think of the screening? I'm just a poor middle a Jewish girl who went through law school to make her parents happy. And like going the, through puberty, you go through puberty, the, then you go through law school. Right, and to stay in the country, that was it for me. All right, but but She's something a, about. You know, the controversy over the full body screenings and like. What is controversial? I don't understand. What's the problem with the full body? I'm also. Because they see your private parts or something, but like, you're an, it's an x ray of you. It's so funny. Wait, are you telling me like when I was a kid, you'd get those comic books and they'd have x ray specs and yeah. you're supposed to put them on and see people naked underneath their clothes? Yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of people want one of those machines then. I know. And the pat downs, it depends on what the guy or the girl looks like. I mean,. If there's a cute security officer, once again, my, a free pat down. my first pat down in Israel to go really? to the, uh, what's the name of the, the Knesset? And she was oh, totally Parliament? hot, and I was just kind of coming into my own sexuality. The Israelis under 30 are hot. <laughs> Okay, first of all. You're like, you're like, you know, you've already checked me, but I feel like maybe someone could have put something in my back again. pocket, like, <laughs> with, within the last five minutes. You may want to go over me again. Right. No, I just That's remember that moment. That was, you know, my fun with it. So, I I don't know. I mean, I, the Canadian, look, we're, we're used to, like, waiting in line, doing whatever you have to do, not worrying right. about it. If everyone you're has to, healthcare. what's the difference between Burning Man and, uh, and a screen? I guess you don't choose your own, you know nudity to, to someone else right. or something? I mean, I think it's people are being prudish about it. But, of course, they, then there are privacy people who I'm sure have some good argument for it. But, I mean, whatever. Maybe it'll help us relax if we are, uh, we'll be less uptight about nudity. Maybe. That could be an interesting way. I mean, how else could you get Americans to, to chill about sex if it isn't about, you know, survival security. and fear right. and security. It's like the perfect meshing of America's yeah, it two is. issues. Violence That's and sex. That's actually so Jewy. It's all the neurosis. All in one place. Right? Neurosis about being killed and about being naked. And we'll get to see who the Jews are, at least the dudes. Right. Although circumcision today is so uh, yeah. omnipresent that um, it's and hard. And maybe some Jews aren't doing it. I have like... You know, yeah, my I'm, cousin did do it to her son. I'm un I don't know that I would do it. We'll see. I wouldn't do it. And Muslims do it too. Right. Yeah. Good, but we'll know point. who's who's part of the two of the three polytheistic religions. So a couple more stories. Okay, I yeah. want to I want to get this in because I'm such a I'm such a fan. I'm yeah. hoping that they'll come do do morning Jews. So before just before the end of the year, Showtime, which out of all of their pilots that they ordered, they aired only one or two, and they only aired it one time, and nobody knows I can't exactly why. I guess it was some like we had to put something on the air once, but Rona and Bev. Um, who Rachel and I talked about, who I got to perform with once. They're this awesome uh, duo, Jamie Dembo and Jessica Chafin, are hilarious Upright Citizens Brigade uh, Brad duo. And it was, it was, I think, the Jewish moment on television that ever was. I, I really am going to link to their videos. First of all, they're freaking hilarious. Do you know? Do you know? They play these two I haven't seen them, but I've read about Jewish them. Jewish ladies from uh, Marblehead, Massachusetts. I can't do really the, the Boston accent. Right, so. Marblehead. Mablehead, they do it beautifully, and uh, they're hilarious. I mean, unbelievable. And they're they're so uncannily like have nailed this kind of person who right. you know once you see it. Um, so they're just really funny. Yeah, and and um, I'm really excited that it was even just the pilot was aired. I guess if you want to see the show get picked up, go on to IMDb and add comments and try to you know put in your two words on Twitter or whatever and help spread it around. Right? Because Isn't that how they got so much popularity? Was because like. People with ma major Twitter follow sh follow ships. Follow well, I mean, I, my first, uh, they definitely are connected. To, they've done a show at UCB where they interview, you know, sort of D-list celebrities or see certain. And I think a lot of comics and people go to UCB to see comics right. in LA know them. So 
you know, anyone who's got a sense of humor. I don't and know. the creator of Weeds, I think, was on board with it. They've been on Weeds. I mean, Dembo <laughs> did a role, actually a lesbian role on Weeds. That I've only seen a few clips of that are pretty, I think it's recurring. It's pretty funny. Uh, recidiv lesbian recidivism. Recurring lesbianism. Oh, well done. Well done. Thank, Thank you for you. explaining. So, so I just I think we've hit the Jew. They're like a Jewish ad fab is kind of the log line, of course. It's okay. nothing to do. So with good it. for the Jews. Uh, beyond good for the Jews. Phenomenal okay. for the Jews. So that's a that's a that's an unequivocal, good for the Jews. Yes. G F uh, G F J. Absolutely, absolutely. We should keep a tally. We we should. They're the hot top of my list. Now. Uh, next, next. Other stories. Right. I think, other stories. I think I'm going to, these two really go on our Shonda lists, really. They're two Shonda moments. And this is my biggest Shonda, which is Katie Royfe, uh, oh. a piece in the New York Times about the dicklessness of young novelists and comparing them to the mostly Jewish novelists whom she esteems in their highest, the Norman Mailers, the Philip Roths, the, uh, you know, Updike, not so Jewish, right. but all very penis uh, obsessed. Right. And Royfe herself came to light uh, with the morning after her book criticizing feminism at that the, For the anti rape movement. Yeah, how dare you oppose rape? And say, and here she's upset with the younger writers, uh, Eggers and uh, David Foster Wallace. Not that she mentions that he killed himself. Uh, right, that was a little awkward. But she's decided that liberal, the liberal arts feminists are the reason they don't write sexier, more intense, virile. Right. Scenes. Not that she's accused that the liberal feminists are the reason David Foster Wallace killed himself, but she might, because Katie Royfe does like to blame what she calls the feminists as though she's not one, or she right. didn't have her job because of feminism. So I, to me, she's number one, Shonda. It is really, it's an incredibly irritating piece, and maybe that's why the Times published it, just to irritate people or show they're open-minded about feminism. But she hasn't read clearly anyone who is exploring sex in any interesting way. They're not maybe all as super famous as right. Roth was, but we don't. We have a lot more, you know, niche writing now, anyway. Right. I think also the it, it has much more to do with this hipster aesthetic than it does with any feminist um, activity. The fact that they write about uh, sexuality in the way that they do. Also, if we, sexuality I think has changed, or their sexuality is different, right. and. And they live in a world in which their relationships with women are different. Right. They live in a post-AIDS era, in a post-queer oh, yeah. era. There's, a, I mean, that's where the more interesting sex writing is right. going on. And it's much more edgy and rebellious, probably, if that's what she's looking for. Uh, uh, to, you know, I don't know. She doesn't seem to know who Stephen Elliott is or Jonathan Ames. Right. Oh, good. I uh, Good mentions of both of those guys. Um, Who are I, all good for the Jews. Very good for the Jews. Um, she's John. Not. You know what, though, is interesting or appalling? I can't believe she mentioned Norman Mailer's somewhat violent writing um, without mentioning that in real life he stabbed his wife. He like stabbed her? You didn't know this? He stabbed I, his wife. I knew he wasn't really a friend of the women. <laughs> no, he stabbed his wife. And I once met a guy. This is Listen to this story. I was at a bar, and this guy was talking to me, and he was really obnoxious and annoying, and he was, like, in his 50s. And he was telling me I was being closed off or something. Like, he thought I wasn't nice enough to him. Meaning you're not going to give him a blowjob. Yeah. Or there's something wrong At with least you. in the bar, you know, afterwards, <laughs> perhaps. But, um, no, not at all. Um, and he was like, do you know who Norman Mailer is? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, well, I was a friend of Norman's. And Norman didn't like a lot of hot air. He didn't like.